Hello there and welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be looking at factory and services in Angular. The way Angular treats them, how it treats them the same and how it always treats them differently. Like I said, we're going to be looking at um, Angular factories and service and see the difference. But before I do, I want to kind of go back and talk about something we covered recently a few videos ago, which is the um, uh, function object, uh, constructor function basically, a function used to construct an object. And I said, oh, well, if you look at how Java 5 does it, which is Java 6, there's actually this keyword in Java 6 that's a class. And I showed it, I start off by showing how you do it in ES6, and then I show what, it's, what you would do it in ES5 today. But we didn't really cover function objects, um, constructor function, sorry, constructor function in um, it, when we did JavaScript in chapter 3. So let me spend some time covering that, and then I'll, once we do that, then I'll go back to Angular factory and services and see the differences there. So um, I, I created a directory here. It's empty, and I set up my editor. Uh, so I'm going to create a file, and let's call it app.js. And what I'm going to start off by doing is saying, let's imagine that I have var called to do equals to some object. And you know, we create an object in Java like that, and of course you can set some properties on it. But I'm going to set some properties on this object outside um, to do, and I'm going to say subject equals um, you know um, clean up for Christmas. It's Christmas time today, Christmas 2016, just to be sure, and then um, complete equals true. I finish clean up, um, did my part. And so I'm going to console that dir that, and so we can see all the properties of it. And so um, let's go over here and do node app.js. And it's exactly what you would expect. There's an object with those properties, right? All right. Well, what about if uh, we know a function is also an object, right? So a function, and let's call it to do, for example. And um, um, to do. And doesn't take anything. And for example, I'm going to say, um, let's console that log this or dir it also um, to do. And so now, um, when that's saved, let me run it again. And I'll do a statement I have a function called to do with a name to do. Oh, we know that um, functions, you can set properties on them. So this, and we're going to come back to this, and I can say subject equals um, to do function subject, All right? One, let's say. And maybe I want to set this that complete uh, equals false. And let me let that save, and um, I'm going to run it. And notice you can't see the property that's on this function. And that's because this function was never executed. What I've done is I've created a function and with this name to do, and I've simply printed out um, that reference, that definition, um, but not to the result of the function running. Um, so, um, and then of course, if I run, run the function, you know, if I do to do, uh, I call the function, well, what is the result of that? Um, you know, uh, um, let's see, uh, you know, do node after JS, it's still going to be the same thing. And even if I try to print out what this is, it's going to be undefined um, because there's no result really from running um, this function. It doesn't really, the result of it is it assigns this, but yeah, um, we, it doesn't return anything that we, we, we can use. Now, if I say return this, maybe then when we run this, um, save it, and then there. And then we have this whole circular um, <laughs> definition thing that's going on here, a bunch of stuff that's just, um, you know, dumped out. And um, that's not what we want, right, um, to return this. Um, okay, so I, I go through all this to show you that um, when you create a constructor function, which is the intention being that when the function is called to create an object from it, that you want the object to behave just as this, then um, what you need to do is say I have a var and I have um, to do, let's say to do, um, let's just call this one foo. Um, foo, 
who who I am a call this to do is equals to new to do all right so now notice the difference um, and then now I'm gonna print out to do here and so I'm gonna let that save I'm gonna run it and notice the difference here the difference now is that these two objects right if you look at them except for the fact that they're saying that it's a to-do they look very very much alike the objects that are returned and a matter of fact if um, I do to do equals to um, function uh, anonymous function and I run it like this so let's let that save and I run it notice how um, they look exactly the same um, here it has just had that name in front of it but um, they you couldn't tell the difference of these two objects how these two objects were constructed that one was constructed this way and then the second one uh, was actually constructed from a function and so it looks like when you do new on a function what it looks like is happening is an object is being created it almost looks as if this is happening this is equal to some empty object and then this that subject and so on is being assigned and then it's getting returned All right return this of course when we try returning this earlier we saw there was a bunch of other things attached to it so but it looks like if that is what's happening when you do when the special case or when you do new on a function versus when you simply call the function right um, except that this get ha happens for you automatically these two things so you didn't have to do that right and the object look exactly the same so this when you do create objects this way is called a, a um, uh, function you know constructor function because the function is being used to construct object objects and you could see the advantage of this is because if I wanted to create a number of to-dos, instead of me having to type something like, you know, var to do two is equal to empty object or even, you know, subject something and, you know, complete um, something else or, you know, true, false or whatever. Um, instead of me having to do this over and over, what I can easily do is simply say new to do I can do something like this now yeah control Z yeah. Up, up. once I have to do's I can easily create them like this I can say that all my constructor function takes two parameter one is the subject and the other one is the status or something and now I can do status and then I can do subject and now when I want to create more to do's I could just do like that and now I can easily it's much easier to do this and then now when I um, to do two right all my objects I know gets created and they look alike and it's much easier and faster than having it to do it this way right so this is a constructor function and that is the purpose of it now let's see how this comes into play when you start talking about um, factories and services all right so let's now create a simple angular application and call index index.html and over here I'm gonna do bang doc type and see does it give me um, yep, HTML and then I'm gonna do HTML and let's see does it give me okay and then head and then title demo okay uh, let's do body and then I want to do uh, close that 
Um, one of the things I want to do is, of course, bring in the Angular script source equals and let's see, paste that. No. Um, let's go get the Angular thing. So I click here and I'm going to copy it. So I just went to the Angular JS website and I use a CND one. I'm going to paste that in there and let's just open this up a little bit and command script all right I close the script and then of course we have a script for our application so script source equals the app.js and of course this is not going to work because um, I need to uh, what is this complaint about regular expression literal uh, I don't know what it's talking about so head head body oh and then, um, all right so um, of course we need to run this so we can do python minus m simple http server 4000 I run that and then here I'm going to refresh and so um, we see it all it's running okay fav no favorite icon I don't have a favorite icon defined and those are the two objects um, that I think is in my code here. All right. Um, so I have Angular. And one of the things I can do, of course, we have to say um, we have an ng app. And we're going to say demo app. And let's go over in Angular and do that. So var app equals to angular that module and demo app and I have no dependencies and then app that controller and then we can say main controller and then we can do function we do it the old style way and um, we can scope that name uh, equals to the test and of course we have to inject the scope and so if I go here and now I do like um, div ng controller and I do main controller and then I do that name and this should work and so let's refresh and make sure that it does work and there's test okay so so that so that tells me angular stuff is working so this doesn't have to do with services or anything so let's imagine that i have a list that i want to spit out here um do json and yep and so now this is a list and i'm going to write a app app that um, factory let's start off with factory first and so my factory I'm going to call it to do factory all right and function and so for angular factory what happened when you create an angular factory or a service is that this function that you pass to angular angular runs it runs it ex well let me just say, a factory to service are singleton, which means they only get invoked once and only once. And we're going to see that just now. And so here, with a factory, um, your function gets called, actually gets executed. And whatever it returns, that is what Angular, Angular uses to inject. So, for example, if my function here return hello world as the value, return hello world as the value, that's all I have in my factory. When I inject it here to do factory, and then I say to do, you're going to see um, it's going to just be hello world because that's what I return. Uh, um, um, what happened is not a function. Uh, what, let's see, factory. Uh, I spelled that incorrectly just now. All right, 
So let's refresh again. Okay, there we go. All right. So now notice I get the value that I returned because what Angular did for a factory is literally run my function to say, oh, construct whatever object you want me to be able to have and inject. And so this is important because on this whole singleton idea, and there's only one time it ever happens, is that I'm going to put a console.log here. I'm going to say to do factory called or instantiated or whatever. And we want to see how many times this get called. I'm going to create another controller here called a controller. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to say that this one uses a controller. And right now it's not important what, what, that this do anything because since this controller needs to be instantiated for this div, um, Angular is again going to inject to do factory in it. And um, actually, yeah, let's, um, let's also print it out. Um, this time I'm going to use the word name list two, list two, just to make sure it all, it's different. So here, um, see, I'm going to call this list two. All right. So now you can see that the two things are two different lists and there are, you can see, in fact, the controls are different. But yet when I run this, you can see factory was called once. But guess what? I have my two um, instantiation, um, two, two instantiation, two values there. That's because Angular, see the first time the factory was used, call the factory function, which is this. It did its magic, print out this value, then return hello world as a value. And Angular literally passed that value in. Of course, since we're talking about JavaScript, I can return an object. So I can return an object, you know, I can return an object and that works equally fine. Angular doesn't care. It's whatever the function return is being used. But remember, that function get called once regardless of how many times you inject it into controllers and other places in your Angular application. That's really important, but I wanted to show you. Now, this looks very much like how we were using services when we were doing services, right? And when we were doing services, we said we created a var something called whatever, and then we stick some stuff on it, like a function, for example, and then we uh, return that, right? Um, again, Angular doesn't care what is it that you return, whether it's an anonymous function, or and that's exactly what's being returned here is an an anonymous function, um, you know. Angular doesn't care. It just injects that and have that, and that gets returned. Okay, um, you know, function runs, that gets returned, and so we can, you know, put other things on the function. We can say as that name equals aha, aha. Oh well, okay. Um, I'm gonna let that save and then refresh here. Okay, it's name, and so you can see that's would get returned. Um, okay, so I don't want to beat that to death, but that's sort of what we've been doing all this time. So what then is a, um, a, a service? A service, let me duplicate this. A service is when you do this. So we're going to call this to do service. And what Angular does is it treats your function reference here as this function as a constructor function meaning that it calls new on it and then injects that but it still does it only one time so again what angular is going to do and remember the constructor function from what we did just now says that if i have a function i can set some properties on it like this that name Hello world. Um, I can set. Um, oh, let me. Let me um, um, let's push this up there. And um, of course, um, yeah. Of course, I can. I can put um, functions on it also. Right, if I want to do something.
right? Um, so you can have method um, functions on it too. And of course, you don't have to do any return because just as we saw before, when you do a constructor function, um, it's as if a new object is created as, and then you can assign things to it and then that's returned by your constructor function. So when Angular calls new on your constructor function here, when it's a service, it's going to take that result and inject it. And again, it's going to do it only once. And so here, let's inject that construct, that service, to do service. And now we're going to inject it again, to do service. And of course, we can call to do service that um, do some do cool stuff, right? And of course, they're going to print out. But what we should expect is we're going to see this method being called once. And then we should get, um, well, OK, we um, let's replace this here so with the service one. Inject the service here. And service here. And when we print it out on there, we should see a property called hello. And of course, we're going to be able to run this function called um, do cool stuff. And so let's see and notice the difference between our factory here and the service is that we don't in fact need to return anything. We don't return a value because our constructor function is going to construct the value for um, the object for us because new is going to be called on it. That's how Angular treats the two things. Here it runs the function. Here it calls new on the function. Anyway, enough talking. Let's think that and there you see. The property has the hello on it, and as you can see, um, our factory was called once because we injected factory. Our service was also called once we injected it. And then here, my to do that, um, do cool stuff because we call the, this method on that object, whatever object we return. Just remember that oh, that's an object that's returned, constructed, created, and returned, initialized, and so it has the property name, and it also has with the value hello world plus the function. Does that make sense? So that is the real difference between a factory and a service. A service gets the new method, new key, gets new, so it can properly construct an object. It, the function gets treated as a constructor function. A factory, you return whatever you want. Now, since this is Angular, the, the two things are essentially the same. I mean, they really are, as you can see, how we are able to just return an object here and use it the exact same way. When this might become um, really important or, um, in the case of when we do ng full stack is when we use, uh, we created our to do model, for example, when we do get to resource and those sort of things, we see the difference. So here's an example. Let's go, I have a constructor function created for our, um, our to do. So var to do. This is a to do model, for example. I mean, it's going to use a constructor function that takes um, the subject and the status, right? And this, that subject is equals to sub. And this, that's complete, is equals to status, right? And so that's what our constructor object. And of course, we can define some methods for, you know, checking if this is valid or something using the prototype that is valid, you know, is equals to some function that we can run over a thing and we can say, you know, um, you know, if ng or whatever, angular that um, is uh, sub is string um, of this, that um, subject, right? You know, if it's not a string, then, you know, return false or something like that. Whatever, right? So we can certainly do things like this so that if you create a to-do, you can then check and see if um, it's, it's valid. Um, you can make sure that oh, you know, the part of the validation is checking how, that you have the minimum number of characters for the subject and so on, right? So you can certainly augment your to-do object with this. But what if you want um, a constructor here to be able to inject to do, all right? You want to be able to inject it like this so that when you go to 
um, create a, a listing, you can actually say, well, I have a list of to-dos, which is an array, a list in an array of new to-do object. And this is to-do one, false, right? Comma, new to-do two, true, right? And notice what I'm doing. I'm just creating a, an array of to-do objects here, right? This is what I want. I want to be able to use it this way, which means this must be a constructor function. This must be a reference to a function, as a, to a reference to a constructor function, so that I can call new on it. But I want it to be injected. Now remember, when we use factory, it injects a value, and the same value gets injected over and over. So obviously, if this is a value or the value is a reference to a constructor function, then I can certainly call new on it over and over and over. And let me just uh, copy this up over here. And bam, paste that. And then I'm going to say my other to do one. Yes, my other to do two. All right. And bam, bam. OK. And so how do I get then this to work this way? How do I get my factory, a factory that it is a to do? Well, simple. Um, I want a factory that injects a to do. So app that factory, because it just got returned a value that's a to do. And we know that when you go for create a um, any one of these things, you always create a you know function like this, and and I go up here. Come on, come on, stop it, stop it! You're confusing me. Yeah. All right, and so I can say var to do is equals to that. And of course, what did we say? Well, when you have a, a factory, you always return a value, right? So let's return that value. This, is, this value is a reference to the definition of this constructor function. Hence, when it's injected, I can call new on it, right? Because that's what we said a factory is. A factory is you return any value you want, and that value gets used over and over. So this is the value I want returned. I want this as a value to be returned and get injected over and over so that, um, you know, uh, new can be called on it. And of course, I can still do the same thing of, where's my to-do function here? I can take this and slide it in here. Absolutely nothing wrong with doing that, right? So now my factory returns this to-do uh, constructor function as a value. And now, here that gets injected, I can call new on it and use it this way. And so that's what you've been seeing um, in the um, ng full stack is models been injected in this way and they use a constructor function. And so let's run this now and nothing should be broken and there we go. My arrow of to do things and of course now I actually have the same objects, it's just that constructor function, a constructor function was used to create them and that constructor function was defined as a, sorry, a constructor function was defined as a to do. And we still have the idea of a service, um, which again, a service you can run new on. Notice we don't want to use a service here for our to do because what Angular would do is run new on our function for us and we do not want that, right? We don't want new being run on this. We want this to be injected and then we run new on it in our controller. Does that make sense? So I hope this clears up the factory versus service because you have been seeing factory a lot in this ng full stack and we didn't really do factories before or specifically call, specifically call them out. And because the two things are very so very similar but then there's a slight difference in how they get used. And that's the important part. And so you can leverage that. And so um, in the next video, we're going to continue. In our previous video, we created a to-do um, model. And we in 
pretty much defined it this way. But, you know, there was not much explanation given. But since the, we're going to be looking at the um, service and resource soon, and you're going to see this come up again, I wanted to make sure that it was clear. Oh, I don't want this video to be much longer, so I'm going to cut it right here, and then we'll continue with NG um, subgenerators, um, NG full stack subgenerators in the next video. Okay, thanks for your time. Hopefully, that clears up the whole Angular factory versus service thing. Uh, let me know if it doesn't, and I'll try and explain again, find some other examples. Okay, see you in the next video. Thanks for your time, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, and definitely I would appreciate it if you would spread the word. All right, see you, and for those who are celebrating, happy holidays. If you're watching this around Xmas of the Christmas holiday or the holiday season of 2016. Okay, bye.